Today's lesson is converting fractions, decimals, and percents. In the last lesson, you represented fractions, decimals, and percents by drawing blocks and shading in parts of them. Now we're going to use math to convert from one form of a number to another. Let's get started. The first conversion we're going to work on is changing a decimal to a percent or changing a percent into a decimal. The rules for these conversions are fairly simple. You have to move the decimal point in the number two spaces to the left or right depending on what you want to change. Here, we're going to change a decimal to a percent. So if you're given a decimal and you want to change it into a percent, you find the decimal point and you move that decimal point two places to the right. So if we start out with seven tenths, we're going to jump that point one two spaces right, so it ends up out here. And if you make jumps and you create empty spaces with your jumps, like our second jump created an empty space here, you have to add that or fill that in with a zero. Uh, if a number repeats, then you can fill it in with the repeating number, but here, since the number doesn't repeat, we have to fill it in with a zero. So we're going to fill that in with a zero, uh, and the last step is just adding a percent sign. So zero and seven tenths is equal to 70%. Now let's try changing a percent to a decimal. This time, since we're going the other way, we're going to change uh, by moving the decimal point two spaces left instead of right. So if you see the example problem here, 93%, you'll notice that 93% doesn't have a decimal point. Uh, but just like any whole number, you can put a point at the end of the number and use that point to do your conversion. So 93% looks like this after we take away the percent sign and put our point down. If the percent already has a point in it, then you use the one that you're given. But here, we're going to move this point two spaces left. So we're going to jump over the 3, jump over the 9, and the point's going to end up right here. So what that means is 93% is equal to 0 and 93 hundredths. So you'll hear your teacher say the phrases 2 to the right or 2 to the left quite a bit when you're talking about converting uh, percents and decimals. You just have to remember which, uh, in which problems you move left and in which problems you move right. So a trick I always use to uh, hopefully make it easier for my students to understand is that I like to tell them if you're changing something into a percent, uh, then you move the point two spaces right because you want to move towards the percent sign. But if you're taking a percent and changing it into a decimal and you don't want it to be a percent anymore, you're going to jump the decimal point away from the percent sign, like we did here, two spaces left. Okay? Um, so, take what you just learned, pause the video for a minute, and try to convert these decimals to percents or the percent to a decimal. So I want you to change it into whichever one it is not. Uh, and then in a minute, we'll go over the, uh, your answers and see how you did. Okay, so what you'll notice here is that for question one and question three, the decimal point moved two spaces to the left uh, to convert the percents to decimals. And in questions two and four, the decimal point was moved two spaces right because we wanted to turn the decimals into percents. Uh, look at questions three and four. You'll notice that percents can be over 100% and percents can actually be decimals themselves. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, percents can go over 100 and under 1. Or they can be negative too. Okay, now we're going to change percents to fractions. Um, another phrase that you're going to hear a lot is what the definition of a percent is. A percent means out of 100. Uh, you learned that when uh, we did the representing lesson last class. So if a percent means out of 100, you can make a fraction out of percent by putting the number over 100. So here, if you're given 85% and you're asked to write that as a fraction, you can just write that as 85 over 100. That's as easy as it is. There's no other rules. Uh, your teachers will ask you to simplify those fractions, so you'll have a little bit of math to do afterwards, but as far as writing a fraction out of a percent, you just have to put the number over 100. Okay, to simplify this fraction, we can divide by 5. Um, 85 divided by 5 is 17, and 100 divided by 5 is 20, so our simplified fraction is 17 over 20. Okay, so take a minute to practice this also. Hit pause. Uh, write fractions out of these two percents and simplify them if possible. Okay. Here what you'll notice is that 36% means 36 out of 100, because the word percent means out of 100. 62% means 62 out of 100, because the word percent means out of 100. Uh, I simplify the fractions here. You can divide the two, uh, the numerator and the denominator in the first question by 4. 
And in the second question, you can divide each of them by 2. So 9 25 is the simplified fraction for 36%, and 31 over 50 is the simplified fraction for 62%. Now let's change fractions to decimals. Uh, this is really the only type of uh, conversion that involves a lot of math because you have to do long division here. Uh, the, the general rule I teach my class is that, is that anytime you're asked to change a fraction into something new, one thing that you are always allowed to do is divide. Uh, and here we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. And that's what we're always going to do. Uh, if you divide, you're always going to end up with either a, de a decimal that ends, which is called a terminating decimal, a decimal that repeats, or a decimal that doesn't end or repeat. So pi is, a, is an example of a decimal that keeps going on forever but has really no pattern to it. It's called a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Let's do our division here. Uh, if you need some practice on your long division, that's something you've got to work on on your own. Uh, you can ask uh, teachers for practice problems if you'd like or ask for help uh, remembering some of the rules. But here's the uh, answer when you do your long division here. Uh, 3 divided by 8, uh, so 3 eighths is the same thing as saying 3 divided by 8. Uh, when you do your long division, you get 0 0.375 or 375 thousandths, and that's how you convert a fraction to a decimal. It's long division. Uh, if I want to change the fraction into a percent, I'm going to kind of start off the same way. I'm going to change the fraction into a decimal first, and then I'm going to use my decimal to percent rule to make it a percent. So I'll do my division like before, and we just did that problem, so we know that 3 eighths equals 375 thousandths. And then I'm going to go back to one of the very first rules that was in this video, and I'm going to change this decimal to a percent by moving the decimal point two places to the right. So if I do that, it goes from in front of the 3, two spaces over, to in between the 7 and the 5. And I can just put a percent sign after that and drop any zeros off the front. And 3 eighths is equal to 37.5%. So now try this on your own. Convert 13 25 into a decimal first by dividing. And then move the decimal point over to change it into a percent. Hit pause and when you're finished you can check to see how you did. Okay, here's the work for you. Uh, 13 divided by 25 ends up being 0 0.52 when you do your long division, which is 52 hundredths. And then if you move your decimal point over two spaces to the right, 52 hundredths equals 52%. Okay, and that makes sense. 52% uh, means 52 out of 100, and so does 52 hundredths. It means 52 out of 100. Okay, last couple of we have to do. This one's a decimal to a fraction. This one's fairly simple, easy, uh, simple also. If you can say a fraction out loud properly with place value, you can write it as a fraction. So this decimal right here, 0 0.45, if I was to say that out loud properly, I would say 0 and 45 hundredths. Since I'm saying 45 hundredths, I can write this in a, as a fraction, and that fraction would be 45 hundredths, or 45 over 100. From here, I just have to simplify to get my final answer. So if I say it out loud correctly, and then I do my division to simplify, 9 20 is the same thing as 0 and 45 hundredths. They are equivalent. Okay, try with this one. Uh, use your place value to say this out loud, then simplify. So hit pause, and then when you're finished, you can check to see how you did. Okay, so in this problem here, uh, this number goes to the thousandths place, so it says 355 thousandths. So if I write that as a fraction, it's 355 over 1,000. Uh, and then I found a common factor of 5 to divide, so my final answer would be 71 over 200. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is changing improper fractions to mixed numbers and vice versa. So here, uh, we're just reviewing how to write 21 over 8 as a mixed number. Uh, the way you do that is long division. Remember what I told you before. If you're ever asked to change a fraction into something new and you're not sure what to do, do division. So here I'm doing numerator divided by denominator again, and I'll do the division. So here's the work. Um, 8 goes into 21 two times with a remainder of 5. We're not going to write R's for remainders anymore. We're going to use that remainder as the numerator in our mixed number. So I'm going to take that 2 from the top and make that the whole number here. 
Uh, the remainder is 5, so that will be my numerator. And the denominator, u was 8 in the original problem, in the improper fraction. So I'm going to write the 8 as the denominator here. Okay? Uh, and just one other little tip. What makes a fraction improper? A fraction is improper when the numerator is larger than the denominator. Uh, that's what makes a fraction improper. And then the one way to change that and write it as something new is to make it a mixed number like we did here. So 21 over 8 is equal to 2 and 5 eighths. Okay? To change a mixed number into an improper fraction. So we're just going to do the same problem backwards. Uh, 2 and 5 eighths, we know from the last slide, should be 21 over 8. So how do we get the 21? Here's what we do. Uh, we take the denominator and we multiply it by the large number in front, the whole number. And 8 times 2 is 16. And then we take the numerator and add that on to the 8 times 2. So if we do 8 times 2 to get 16, 16 plus 5 is 21. That's our numerator. 21 is our numerator and the denominator stays the same as 8. So if you think about it, we just kind of did the opposite of what we did in the last problem. Um, we did 21 minus... Uh, 8 to get 16 in the last problem, and then we got 5 as our remainder. So, in this problem, it's multiplying and then adding. Okay, so try this. Change number 1 into a mixed number, change number 2 into an improper fraction. So hit pause, and when you're done, you can check your answers again. Okay, in this problem, um, do long division. So if you do 17, uh, divide, if you divide 17 into, or if you divide 17 by 7, 7 goes into 17 two times. That's where the 2 comes from. And since 7 times 2 is 14, there's 3 more left over to get to 17. So 3 is your numerator. That would be the remainder for the problem if you did your long division. And the 7 for the denominator stays the same. For question 2, uh, we have to multiply and add. So what's 7 times 3? 7 times 3 is 21. 21 plus 2 is 23. That's where 23 comes from. And then the denominator of 7 stays the same. Okay? Uh, I know we did a lot of conversions today, so go back and watch this again if you need to. Uh, use this for your homework. It'll be very helpful. Uh, use it to study for your quizzes like I always tell you. And I will see you next time.